Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white cookie counters deck, which combines some of the older artifact synergies in standard with the newer food synergies from Wilds of Eldraine, and they have some great overlap, also working quite well with all these plus one plus one counters. So starting out at one mana, we've got two copies of Skrelv, a 1-1 artifact creature that can protect some of our key threats, potentially making them unblockable as well. We've got a full set of Teething Wormlet, one of my favorite cards in this deck, starts out as a 1-1, We'll have Death Touch as long as we control three or more artifacts, which is quite likely in this deck. And then whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under our control, we gain one life. And if it's the first time this ability resolved this turn, we can also put a plus one plus one counter on it. So the goal is usually to make sure we cast at least one artifact, so we can keep growing the Wormlet over time. And the life gain is also very helpful when facing those aggressive red decks. Then we've got a full set of Ginger Brute, a nice reprint for this deck, a 1-1 artifact creature, also has the food subtype, which will be relevant for some of our synergies, has haste, and then we can also make it pseudo-unblockable, dodging all creatures except for opposing creatures that also have haste, and then as any food can also be sacrificed for 3 life. And then the Iron Apprentice starts out with a plus one plus one counter on it, and when it dies we can move all its counters onto another creature. So if we put more counters onto the Apprentice, we can potentially move those around as well. And then at 2 mana we've got the Patchwork Automaton, starts out as a 1-1, but has a bit of built-in protection with Ward 2, and whenever we cast an artifact spell it gets a plus one plus one counter, so it's a bit different from the Wormlet and the Archivist, which work on Enter the Battlefield, whereas Automaton is on cast, so it will miss out on a plus one counter if, let's say, a food token enters the battlefield, but it's still quite good in this deck. And then a Tough Cookie is also excellent, a 2-2 artifact creature food golem, so it does have that food subtype once again, enters the battlefield creating another food token, and then for 2 and a green we can turn one of our non-creature artifacts into a 4-4 artifact creature until end of turn, so we can animate some of those food tokens, could even turn on our glass casket and turn it into a 4-4 creature to try and close out the game, also makes it easier not to overextend into an opposing sweeper effect. And then we've got three copies of Elvish Archivist, which is pretty synergistic in this deck as it works with our plus one counter theme. Of course, plenty of artifacts to enable it, so it can pick up two plus one plus one counter whenever an artifact enters for the first time. And then if an enchantment enters, we get to draw a card instead. And we do have quite a few sagas in this deck, as well as a few removal spells that can trigger the Archivist. Only playing three copies because drawing multiples can be awkward, because then we might have a hand without lots of artifacts and enchantments instead, which we need for the Archivist to be effective. And then we've got some sagas, including the full set of Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Starts out by making a 1-1 token, then we get to make a food token on chapter 2, and eventually put X plus one plus one counters on a creature we control, where X is 1 plus the number of foods we control. So that counts all the food tokens, but also all these food creatures contribute towards Welcome to Sweet Tooth, so that can also quickly add up. And then we've got two copies of A Reign of Truth, which can also pump up our creatures quite a bit, this one only until end of turn, but counts both artifacts and enchantments, and then the portrait of Michiko can keep up the pressure. And then also Lith is awesome in this deck, despite being legendary I'm considering playing a fourth copy, since we can always cycle away additional copies we draw, and then this will give us additional plus one plus one counters whenever we get any, and for one and a green we can also activate it, essentially resulting in two plus one plus one counters, so that can also be a nice mana sink, and just look through the deck you can see how many of these plus one counter creatures we have throughout and then it also works quite well with our sweet tooth and then our removal consists of two copies of glass casket which is a little bit more synergistic as it can also trigger cards like patchwork automaton but it is limited to exiling creatures with mana value three or less whereas ossification can hit any creature or planeswalker but requires a basic land to enchant which is why i'm not playing any of the channel lands to keep the basic land count as high as possible and then ossification an enchantment that can also maybe draw a card with the Elvish Archivist. And then our mana base is very simple, just seven basics of each color, and then a few dual lands, not playing any of the other dual lands that enter tapped early on in the game, since we definitely want to be curving out as a relatively aggressive deck. Although I will say, sometimes you do end up hanging on to your one drops to play them after maybe deploying Archivist, Automaton, or sometimes even after playing Ozolith, we could play Apprentice and immediately make it a 2-2. So sometimes we don't want to play the one drop on turn one, so that's something to watch out for. For. But yeah, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, Skralf, turn two, Automaton. And then finding something like an Ozolith would be great. Up against the red aggro, and they're just gonna take out Skralf. 
Don't really mind. Wormlet was also a good pickup. Probably still start with Automaton, and then next turn we can Wormlet plus Automaton. Turn 2 Felden hits for 2. And an Ozolith, perfect. So how about Wormlet plus Ozolith now? Immediately grow both creatures. Even though Automaton doesn't get the double counters yet from Ozolith. But next turn it will. So last chance to play with fire. The Automaton is going to be a Squee, which does not have the best of attacks. And uh, yeah, we're just going to run away with the game here. Wormlet plus another Automaton. And I don't see Monoret coming back from this. Attack for 9. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems decent. A bit light on artifacts, but we've got a few payoffs. I guess Rafine's Tower, do we risk playing turn 2 Archivist, or do we wait till turn 3 so we can try and get some immediate plus 1 counters? Might be better. Still have a few options on turn 2 here. Wormlet plus Ginger Brute's one of them. But then I don't have a 1-drop to play after Archivists. Could just go for a tough cookie. And then turn after Archivist Ginger Brute, but then Wormlet misses out on all those plus 1 counters. So, tough call. I think tough cookie is fine. And then having this in play also potentially gives us an activated ability to play around sweeper effects in the future. It's going to be a wedding announcement. So we do want to keep up the pressure, and also Lith is a decent way to do that. So I can go Wormlet plus Ozolith, which would grow both Wormlets with two counters. And then next turn we can reassess to see if we want to commit the rest of our creatures, or if we use some of our activated abilities. Opponent takes it all. Could be a shieldred here. Wandering Emperor can exile Wormlet. I'm not overconfident. Just and they'll get another token to protect it. You're done. Now, Ginger Brute is perfect for finishing off a Planeswalker at one loyalty. So can go Archivist. Saving myself one damage. Play Ginger Brutes. And then use the ability. And then Wormlet goes face. Tough cookie. Probably okay to trade for two one ones. Even though I could use the ability later. Now we also have Ozolith we can activate. And their tokens are about to get plus one plus one. So better to trade now. Opponent just jumps. Okay, hope to dodge a sweeper. Another Emperor could be effective, but can once again finish it off with Ginger Brute. And then next turn we're looking at activate Ozolith, activate Tough Cookie, maybe start putting counters on the Ginger Brute. Opponent passes with another Wandering Emperor available, I'm sure. So now what? Still interested in activating Ozolith. Ginger Brute would get two counters up to a 3-3. Of course, I won't have the mana to use the ability. So then they could double block Ginger Brute, Exile Wormlet, and then still take 7-8-9 damage. It's not the best situation for me, but it's probably not going to get any better if I wait. Could not attack with Ginger Brute, I suppose. And then just pump Tough Cookie, activate an attack, and then they could double block Archivist, Exile Wormlet, but then we still have a tough cookie we can activate. Kind of prefer that. Yeah. 
So there's another Emperor. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. My judgment is final. Okay. Points at six. And we're running out of creatures, so that's potentially a concern. Sir Ginger could be a nice answer to all these Planeswalkers, a card that I did try out in the deck but did not make the final cut, but certainly something you could consider in the sideboard if you were playing this in best of three. Bowen's gonna cash in the Emperor for another token. At least go for the throw, it's not very effective against our deck. Find another Ginger Brute. So we can start attacking with some of our evasive creatures. And I don't think I bother attacking with Tough Cookie or activating it. Just send in the two Brutes. And hope they don't have a third Wandering Emperor, because that would be very hard to beat. Opponent takes four damage. And I may as well play out my land since we might be able to use it with all these abilities. Opponent had a Virtue of Loyalty. Okay, can they find an answer to the Brutes? I don't think they can present lethal from this state. Five mana. Can Ginger Brute go the distance, defeating the double Emperor? Rafine is next. At least no life-linking creature in play to try and stabilize. And our opponent's just gonna pass. And they explode. Awesome. Ginger Brute goes all the way against Esper. Okay, we're on the draw. Well, hopefully Welcome to Sweet Tooth works out, because we've got a lot of them. Turn to Thalia would be a disaster now. I guess we've got a Casket, but that's also gonna cost us three mana. So what's next? Another Plains and Ossification, alright. Don't mind seeing that. So they must have another one in hand. Get our Saga going. Next turn we get to Double Spell. So I'm not too worried about not having any creatures to pick up the plus one counters here. Ooh, Peacekeeper. Well, probably names Glass Caskets. I guess they could go after Welcome to Sweet Tooth, but then we just cast get the Peacekeeper and move on. But uh, yeah, good that we picked up some removal. Opponent goes for our Saga. So that kind of forces us to deal with the Peacekeeper now. Also Vacation, also an option, but can save that one for later. In case they've got some 4 mana cards. And then do I offer the trade for Veteran? Probably not, since if they have another removal spell, we might be without creatures. And it would be a shame to miss out on those plus one counters. And then ideally we can put the counters on Apprentice, so if it ends up dying we can at least move all the plus one counters onto the next creature. Opponent plays Igancho, so not gonna hold it for channel, and opponent did have a Thalia, just a bit late to the party here. So we can still play a 3 mana welcome. Hopeful Initiate's also pretty scary since that can blow up artifacts and enchantments. Another casket. So grow Apprentice. I think we just play another welcome to Sweet Tooth. And then hold Apprentice on defense to make it harder for them to train the Hopeful Initiate. And then next turn we can remove a creature, keep attacking. Opponent did have another ossification, makes sense. So they could now attack and train. So we'll just have to get rid of the Hopeful Initiate now, which is a little bit annoying since we've got so many non-creature spells in hand. Or we can just deal with Thalia and hope they never get a second counter, which is also reasonable. And I guess we've got another removal spell at the ready. So we can cast get Thalia. And 
pass the turn. Initiate hits for two. And there's another one. Okay. Automaton's decent. So, welcome to Sweet Tooth plus Automaton. And then I think I still hang back. Otherwise, they get to train the other initiate for free and they would have two counters total. Now they could still attack, train, and then destroy an artifact or enchantment. But at this point, that wouldn't be a disaster. And then next turn will maybe ossification, assuming they don't attack here. If they found another removal spell for the 4 4, that would have been pretty bad. Just another veteran. Opponent is going for the attack. So they are giving up their initiates. Could triple block the other one. And then if they remove two counters to destroy artifact or enchantments, this would go down to a 1 2. So it still dies if they target automaton. And if they destroy something else, that's fine. So I mentioned they just take out Automaton, get back, maybe a Peacekeeper, or destroy the Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Alright, opponent gets back, Peacekeeper. Name is also Vacation. And don't need to worry about those initiates anymore. Okay, so could also vacation the Peacekeeper. It's not a huge priority. Would allow me to attack with our 4-4. Four, four. Next turn we'll get some more counters, so we'll have two sizable creatures. Yeah, maybe that's still okay. There are definitely a few scarier creatures. If Brutal Cathar shows up, it's gonna be bad no matter what, since it can just get rid of my tokens for good. Adlin comes to mind. And then we're hoping to find a tough cookie to animate these food tokens. Also, Lith would be nice. Bonus attacks, I'll take it. And Specialist can get back. Hopeful initiate. But it's unable to attack. So it's also not going to train. So, probably send in both creatures. Opponent is at 27, so we've got a long way to go. Maybe keep back the 4-4 to block Specialist, or I could double block with my 1-1s. And that will unlock the Initiate once again. I think we just send 5-5, then next turn opponent hangs back. And then I can potentially attack with both. Especially if we can grow Automaton in the meantime. So yeah, waiting for an Ozolith. Ginger Brute would be an evasive threat, just wouldn't be very large. Double Veteran attacking. Sort of implies another Iganjo here. Or they just want to turn it into a Flyer. Which could also work. With three food tokens, I think we can take it. Of course, Iganjo will still be effective on defense. They already played one. Chances of them having two are not very high. So they're probably just looking to trade it off, get back Luminous Phantom. So, I mean, if I'm not going to block, it's kind of like a flyer hitting me anyways. So I may as well block. Okay. That's acceptable. And Tough Cookie was excellent. So we get to play it, grow Automaton, activate to turn food into a 4 4. Just gotta make sure not to activate the summoning sick one. And then now, probably okay to send most of my creatures. Opponents potentially double blocking the human. That's fine. Opponent goes back up to 18 here, but their board state is diminishing. 
Okay, Adlin was a good one. So now we have to be a little bit careful, especially with initiates being able to train. Bit of a strange attack. And there's Ginger Brute, so we'll grow Automaton once again. And then I can activate Ginger Brute, which will go unblocked. And still leave an activation for Tough Cookie. And then... Could send in the 5-5. Five five, and then leave the 4-4 four four on defense, essentially. I think I like that. Okay. Happy to trade a food token for an Adlin. Their opponent just hits us for one. I maybe should have animated a food to block the 1-1, one -one, but this is fine. With a land we can double activate Tough Cookie. Still probably leaving one activation on defense. And then we can activate one now. Let's see, Tough Cookie does say non-creature, so it's not like we can turn our Ginger Brood into a 4-4. Would have been pretty nice. So, and get in for 9. And then next turn we can try and go for lethal. Yeah, this was a pretty grindy game. We got lucky that our opponent didn't find more heavy hitters sooner. Can imagine them playing the uh, Convoke Knight, which could find more goodies. They didn't find Brutal Cathar either, which is very good in this matchup. It's gonna be another specialist getting back initiates. Adlin attacks out of desperation. And yeah, we'll set up some decent blocks, can take out hopeful initiates. Trade for Adlin. So initiate reconsiders. And Adlin's gonna hang back as well, just phantom attacking. Does gain them alive with phantom. And Archivist. So if we double activate Tough Cookie, Pona's got three blockers. Essentially a 10 life thanks to lifelink. If we were to attack with everyone, block my three largest creatures. We're getting in for six, seven. So yeah, that's probably not the play. So probably gonna stick to the plan. Activate Tough Cookie. Could also not send the 5-5 five five since it just trades for Adlin now. But on defense it's not going to be much better for me. So maybe it's just a one food token attacking for now. Instead of also sending the human. I think the human can attack, take the trade for Adlin. Opponent also double blocking here. So yeah, good trades. And then now that Adlin's not a concern, could just play Archivist. Okay. Another land. And our opponent explodes at long last. So yeah, I managed to outgrind them thanks to a tough cookie showing up in time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable enough. I think we hang on to Apprentice as a one drop we can play after deploying Archivist and Ozolith to get more value. And then I turn to... I think Ozolith 
makes sense, especially if we draw a lane next turn, going Archivist plus Apprentice is good value, as we'll get lots of additional plus one counters. And there's a land. So yeah, that seems like the plan here. Could also postpone Archivist so it doesn't get removed right away. Go Tough Cookie plus Apprentice. But then I might not be able to trigger Archivist right away. This would also put Archivist out of range from a Virtue of Persistence. As it would immediately pick up 3 plus 1 counters up to a 3-4. Their opponent had a Voltage Surge in response. Okay, so kind of an unusual blue-red artifact deck. Thrain Spider is next. So, play Tough Cookie, play Apprentice, or we can Glass Casket, play Apprentice, and get the Spider out of the way. Building up our board first might be alright, and I guess we can also use the Power Stone. So, could even go Cookie plus Casket if we'd like. Sure. And then hit for two. Ooh, it's a Mind Stone and Tweak Stone. That's a good one. Opponent could draw to or take out one of our creatures. Decides to draw. So they are ramping very nicely. And uh, next turn we could see some heavy hitters. Just gotta empty my hand and hope for the best. Could play Tough Cookie, play Apprentice, and activate Ozolith still. And then we want to probably activate on Apprentice, so that if it dies, we at least get to move more plus one counters around. If... Uh, Portal to Phyrexia were to happen, does our opponent have the mana for it next turn? I guess it would still be one short, but they could have a Cityscape Leveler, which would be pretty good. Yep. Could also destroy our Glass Caskets. We will get some Power Stones at least, so... Makes it easier to activate Tough Cookie. And also Vacation was an excellent draw. So let's see, if I activate Tough Cookie, could activate twice, animate both my foods, and then we should have lethal, so I don't even need ossification. Make sure not to sacrifice my Tough Cookie, that would be a disaster. Could also animate Glass Casket, maybe that was the more flavorful win. So yeah, managed to go wide enough here. That it didn't matter that they had a pretty nice curve. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a one drop, but I think I'll give it a try. Turn on Phoenix Chick, so up against a red aggro. So it's definitely going to be important that we can double spell on turn 4, deploying double 2-drop, because we're going to be pretty far behind. Okay, we've got the 4th mana. So I could start with Welcome to Sweet Tooth, and then next turn Tough Cookie would provide more food to set up for the final chapter. And then if they kill my 1-1 one -one token, I'm not too upset. Playing a Patchwork Automaton, also reasonable, they can't kill it end of turn. And it would be a bit more difficult for them to take it out. And I guess they're not super far ahead on board, just a couple of 1-1s. So maybe we can take it slow with the Automaton. Sure. And then next turn, maybe go for Tough Cookie and then double Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Going and discarding a land. And then now they could play with fire, although it's going to take up their entire turn. Alright, that's fine. Also, Vacation will save for one of their three drops. 
And then tough cookie versus welcome to sweet tooth. Cookie blocks Epicure better. Even if they have a monstrous rage, I'm okay with that trade. And then we'll be able to have Ozolith in play by the time the final chapter goes off. Put in just with a lightning strike here. Take two. And another automaton's decent. So can go automaton plus Ozolith. And it will only pick up one counter. Uh, since the Ozolith will give a counter on cast and it's not in play yet. But that might still be the move. Alternatively, we can look at our saga. Still gonna hold on to ossification. If we go double welcome to Sweet Tooth, make two one ones. Could double block Epicure to play around some Monstrous Rage. And then still at least trade. And then make a bunch of food and then go Automaton Ozolith. I think going Automaton Ozolith is fine. That also opens up the flexibility of activating Ozolith. If we don't want to go double welcome. Opponent channeling Crucible. So Monstrous Rage is very much on my mind. But can I afford to take four? They'll still have a Monstrous Rage in hand, of course. Versus I can uh, block Monstrous Rage, trade, take three plus two extra trample. And then next turn I could welcome to Sweet Tooth and activate Ozolith to make a 3-3. Three, three. I think that's reasonable. And there it is. And then we'll still have some food tokens left to sacrifice. Just a land off the top. And Archivist is nice. So Archivist into Welcome to Sweet Tooth, draw a card. And our opponent knows that they're too far behind with two food tokens representing six life and an active Ocelith. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Question is whether I hold Ginger Brute until after playing Patchwork Automaton. I think that's okay. And then the plan is Automaton into Ginger Brute plus Sweet Tooth. Opponent fetching an island, blue whites, turn to farmhand. So we wouldn't be attacking into it with the Ginger Brute, but we'll still help grow Automaton. And hopefully we can find some more threats. I'll take more Sagas off the top. Another fetch land, getting an island, and another farmhand. Might be time to casket one of them. Skrelf could also come in handy. And then we can activate Ginger Brute. And Ginger Brute might be the recipients of the plus one counters depending on uh, what our opponent does here. Also possible that I put them on the automaton, which is harder for the opponent to remove, thanks to Ward. I guess we also have a Skrelv now, which can protect whatever creature we suit up. So the main concern would be a sweeper effect next turn, a Sunfall would be difficult to recover from. Opponent with a Jace, so they're a mill deck. Okay, Jace is fine. Although that does make a potential Sunfall more likely next turn. So can we just kill our opponents? That would be the easiest solution. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I count exactly 15. Okay, that makes it easy. Awesome, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and this acceptable. Wormlet into... Got a few options. Potentially turn to Archivist, turn 3, deploy our artifacts. Opponent on a red aggro, turn 1, Phoenix check. So, growing the Wormlet has its advantages here. If I play Archivist, they might kill it, they might just play Haste Creature, and then next turn we can grow it. It's not like I have a 1-mana artifact that I can play alongside it to immediately make it a 2-3. So, playing Archivist seems fine. And then next turn Wormlet plus Tough Cookie hopefully gives us a lot of plus 1 counters. Scoundrel goes for Wicked Roll, so... Yeah, no burn spell. It's good to see. Hopefully we don't draw too many more lands. But at least we've got a mana sink with Tough Cookie. And I feel comfortable racing. Swiss Pierce next. All out attack. Yeah, we can just take it. Probably see a Lightning Strike on Archivist, Monstrous Rage on Swiss Spear instead. And make that two. Alright, that is a lot of damage. We're at eight. But luckily found an artifact, so that's more life gain. Uh, let's see, do we have lethal? 10, 12, yeah, we have exactly enough here by animating our food token. Take that mono red aggro. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand is keepable. Wormlet into maybe a welcome to Sweet Tooth, facing turn one veteran. Now I'm probably going for a Tomaton early. Blue-white, take the one. So they can easily have a counter spell in hand. Maybe I prefer them countering Welcome to Sweet Tooth. And then next turn, Automaton plus Ginger Brute immediately grows the Automaton. But playing Automaton now would technically grow the Wormlets. And then I can grow it again next turn. Potent might be sitting on reinforcements, don't really want to trade for Wormlet. So Virtue of Loyalty instead, fair enough. So next turn, welcome to Sweet Tooth plus Ginger Brutes. And a Zephyr Singer with Convoke. Yeah, their creatures now fly. Haven't seen this one before, but uh, seems pretty fitting in this deck. Okay, so stick to the plan. Don't quite get to attack. But next turn with the Reign of Truth, we could set up some decent hits. Opponent draws. And another Automaton's decent. So Reign of Truth, pumping Automaton. It's and Wormlet can attack. And then next turn we could pump Ginger Brutes and make it unblockable. No haste creatures in blue-white. Opponent takes it, that's risky. What's their plan? Another wedding announcement, doesn't scare me. Might as well attack with the Vigilant Knight. Opponent does gain 2, up to 11. So target Ginger Brutes. Target Ginger Brutes. 9-9. Nine, nine. Not quite lethal. Also need to activate it to begin with. But we can send a few more creatures. Let's activate Ginger Brute. And then... What else can attack? That's probably it for now. And 
the next turn we can activate Ginger Brute again if it's still alive. Is this a Convoke card, perhaps? I guess there is Cut Short, I believe is the name, which would be pretty effective. Elspeth Smite makes sense. So that's going to finish off Wormlets. That's acceptable. Well, we've got a lot of hopes riding on this Ginger Brute. Opponent is at 2. So they need to deal with our now 4-4. Four, four. And then... Tough Cookie can animate another food. Opponent's got at least two more life on the way with the 1-1 one, one tokens. They could play a Virtue of Loyalty, but that doesn't answer Ginger Brute. Opponent hits us with Veteran and Singer to draw two with Wedding Announcement, so they're digging for probably a Wandering Emperor here to exile the Brute. And Wormlet the draw. So let's say we activate Tough Cookie, activate Ginger Brute, attack with everyone. Opponent Wandering Emperor, Ginger Brute, back up to four. Two blockers, Eat Automaton, block the 4 4 token. Then they would still take five. So I think that's reasonable. Opponent's got a reinforcements instead, so don't need to worry about Emperor. They do gain two, up to four. They could make another token, I suppose. But I'm still lacking the all-out attack, and our opponent concedes. Awesome, very close one here against an original take on the blue-white tokens. All right, so we get to see our green-white cookie plus one counter artifact deck in action. And uh, yeah, it's certainly a deck capable of some explosive draws. Wormlet, one of my favorite cards in the deck alongside Ocelot, can be quite nice indeed. And then we've got a few different angles of attack with the unblockable Ginger Brute and with Ozolith and Tough Cookie providing additional utility in the late game. So not a perfect deck, probably weaker than the Green-White Enchantments deck overall, but if you're bored of the typical aggro decks in standard, you can give this one a shot. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.